it's all down to the way the pad is, is made. And there's two main types, there's the sintered pad or the organic pad. So for the sintered pad, they're just using some uh, powder, metallic powder, and compressing it. And there's no, there's no glue involved. And in the organic pad, it's a mix, again, it's a mix of powder, but they're using some glue to hold everything together. The big difference is the, at hot temperature, the glue will melt and uh, create a, a, a layer of gas between the pad and the disc and that will, that will uh, reduce the efficiency of a brake. But on the upper side, they, they are better at lower speed and they, they tend to do a bit less noise. The differences between a cable system and a hydraulic system is a hydraulic system isn't compressible. So with a cable system, you can suffer from cable stretch or it's much more affected by bad setting up, whereas a hydraulic system, correctly bled and correctly aligned, uh, will be sort of maintenance free for years. There's a floating disc, which is basically a two part disc, and uh, we call it a fixed disc. Fixed, or, yeah, solid. Which is just cut out of solid of the same sheet of material. So the, the big difference is the floating disc, when it gets affected by heat, the, the outer will expand and retract freely without affecting the center. Because what can happen in with a fixed disc is like when this is expanding due to the heat and retracts, it could be bending the arms and wrap your disc slightly. And then your disc starts rubbing against the pad. Again, for rotor floating rotors, yeah. uh, a better choice again for noise. They also come up a bit lighter as well. And they look better. Yeah, and you can colour match your bike. So there are different sizes for the disc. Uh, on road it's only 140 or 160. 160 yeah. And uh, between a 140 millimetre and 160, you're looking at uh, a braking force increase of about 13%. So a bigger disc will provide a bigger braking force. Uh, with cleaning discs, uh, any sort of methylated spirit or alcohol, uh, there are disc specific cleaners or disc friendly bike cleaners, they're all good to use. Uh, you want to avoid any sprays like GT85, WD40, AC90, all those sprays, avoid them. They're not only bad for the discs, they're bad for the seals in the caliper and in the levers as well. Also, when it's on the bike, if, you, if you're putting your silicone spray to make your bike all shiny, just beware not to spray it on the disc because it make, you'll make the pad squeal. And if you're lubing your chain, uh, be careful as well so the lubricant doesn't get on the disc. You really, you really don't have to clean the disc. Braking cleans the disc itself. You're normally only cleaning it if you've contaminated it anyway, um, which can be a problem for the pads. You might need to change your pads if yeah. you contaminate it with some oil. And then you'd really want to give the disc a good clean to try and save the disc even though you've had to change the pads. You don't clean the disc on your car, so there's no need to do it on your bike. There's two main types of uh, brake fluid. There's the uh, mineral oil and the dot brake fluid. So both of them, they, they've got the same aim, is just to transfer the force. So it's, we're using the, the fact that it's incompressible. Well, the main difference is the, the brake system is absorbing humidity and that turns into water in the system. So the, the dot fluid is like mixing syrup and water. The water will get absorbed and that will uh, reduce the, uh, the properties of the, uh, of the dot fluid. I mean, it will, it will boil slightly at a lower temperature. On the other end, the mineral oil, it doesn't mix with water, they will stay separate. So it will be like a little, it might be a little bubble of a uh, little drop of water in the system, and this will drop, will sit somewhere in the, in the braking line, and the worst place will be if it sits in the caliper because the caliper could easily get up to temperature, and the water uh, boils at 100 degrees. So if your caliper gets to 100 degrees, which is quite likely, mm -hmm. the water will vaporize and create some air in your system, and you you lose. All the, all the braking force. Caliper alignment is pretty key to the feeling of the brake. Yeah. If 
a brake can be bled up as perfect as anything, but if the caliper is off and it's bending the disc when you apply the brake, the brake's going to feel bad. Uh, just like a rim, rim brake alignment, again, it's fairly paramount to just getting it really square and making sure the pads pull evenly and you'll get really nice smooth braking. Again, if it's off and you're sprinting out of the saddle, the wheel will flex and it might touch the caliper again, get an annoying noise. If it's central and it has the right gap, it'll be fine. So braking whilst using disc brakes, obviously it's similar if you've, if you've got expensive carbon rims, you, you tend to feather your brakes a little bit more. You don't want the brake to get really hot, you don't want to hold it on the whole way in the descent. Uh, rotors and rims are designed to be naturally cooled by the air, so just let the brake off, let the air cool it and then apply it again, uh, just feathering the whole way down the descent. Uh, one thing, you've just got to go and try it. Everyone who tries disc brakes, whether it's mountain bikers, cycle crossers, road riders, uh, none of them seem to go back or have any complaints about them. Uh, so just try them and most people would be converted straight away.